All right, we're going to get started here now. Welcome to the power of CAD CAM in a small lab with a high-end mindset. Uh, my name is Mike Small. I own a one-man dental lab uh, where I fabricate crown and bridge restorations with a strong emphasis to the aesthetic side of things. Um, it's my belief that just because you have a CAD CAM system in your laboratory it does not mean that you have to become a robot. Um, so today, I'm going to explain a little bit about my philosophies of CAD CAM and how it fits in with a high-end mindset. Um, the way I'm going to do that is tell you a little bit about myself, tell you about my previous lab experience. I'm going to run through a few things that I found very important when I uh, f initially purchased. Um, and then I'm going to run through how I feel that it fits and how I can get the results that I want out of these crowns um, using the system. So first off, we'll talk about what we do this for. What do we work for? Feed our kids. This is my wife, my three beautiful girls. I've got a dog and three cats, you know, typical family. Um, we live in La Crescent, Minnesota. Very small town. It's also known as the apple capital of Minnesota. So if you're looking for apples and you're in the area, come on by. My neighborhood actually that I live in now used to be an apple orchard, believe it or not. So just kind of. Um, next closest city is La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's where I went to school for graphic art. Um, dropped out. It's about a semester left. I didn't want to be stuck behind a computer all day. <laughs> so, but the thing about it is I'm not stuck behind a computer all day now and you'll find out a little later on in my presentation. Um, La Crosse is known for the world's largest six pack. Seven million cans of beer in that thing when it's full. Um, we're also known for our river views and bluff views. It's a beautiful area and we have one of the largest Oktoberfest celebrations in the U.S. So if anybody's been to that they know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a pretty big deal. Um, so let's get to the, to the presentation part. Um, talk about my previous lab experience. I worked in a 25-man lab at one point. Um, I started off over the shoulder, just watching. A week or two of that. Um, start getting into metal finishing, all that side of it. Get into the waxing. Um, I wanted to learn everything I could. I wanted to, to be the best. Um, I really like art. As I mentioned before, I went to school for graphic art. Um, I was into drawing, painting, all that stuff. Um, and how I got into the lab business after school, I, I knew a doctor very well, Dr. Cowgill. Um, he's a CEREC doctor. He's also a mentor. And um, he told me that being a lab technician would be good for me with the, the skills that the skill set that I had that he knew that he saw um, he thought I would do well with it so I said eh, I'll give it a shot you know I don't want to work at Walmart or something like that a menial job um, so I got into it I noticed a few things once I was in the lab this is what people think of CAD CAM I mean I pulled this off of somebody's Facebook two weeks ago it's, it's true to a certain degree but it doesn't have to be um, I don't necessarily believe this at all. I think it's a matter of what you want to do with it. If you want to just pump stuff out, cool. You know, the dentist, if they want to do their own anterior work and it's acceptable, that's, who am I to say what they should and shouldn't be doing? Um, but I just, I disagree. I knew a doctor that had a system. He used it well and he still respected the laboratory and that's very important. While I was at the lab, while I was hearing all this about CAD CAM, I noticed this. It was going on in my laboratory. I don't know how many people responded to this survey, but even if it was 10 laboratories, those numbers are terrible. Lab, lab was kind of dying off a little bit there in that size of a laboratory. Layoff technicians wouldn't hire another one. So what was happening with me is since I knew how to do just about everything in Crown and Bridge, became a utility player on top of all my waxing, 
for Emacs, which is what I ended up doing mostly in the laboratory. Um, so you become a utility player and you get bogged down. You don't want to do it. I wanted to focus. Um, it was while I was at the laboratory that I was able to meet Bob Boyd before he was with Serona. Um, he's a very important part of this story here, too. Um, this is how CAD CAM found me. I had a doctor with CAD CAM, as I said before. Um, he got me into the lab business, but I still had the belief that my hands were better than a machine. I respect what they did with it, but I still liked the artistic side of it. Um, <laughs> I was uh, at an MDLA meeting in Red Wing, was it, Bob? Red Wing, Minnesota, at a casino. <laughs> we were there watching uh, Kennedy Hawksworth uh, for an Ivo Claire stain and glaze thing. And I had walked around and I checked out the booth, the Serona booth. They'd just been launching the 4.0 software. I was like, oh, that stuff looks pretty, pretty cool. But it's CAD CAM. I'll never mill an Emacs, I told Bob. He's like, oh, yeah, you just wait, you wait. I said, I will never buy that. <laughs> I said, I'm an artist, damn it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do my thing. Um, but the funny part about it is, not too much longer, I was thinking about opening up a business. I went to my friend, Dr. Calgill. I said, what do you think about me just doing Emacs? Do you think I can survive in this, with this just one little niche carved out? He said, you know, I, I see a lot of trends. Um, that was right around when Zirconia was getting big in our area, the Bruxers. Um, Emacs was taking over some PFM work. So what ended up happening was I just said, I, I think I can do it. I'm getting the volume at the lab. I'm waxing like 10 units a day, pressing the same that I waxed the day before. Um, and I, I felt like if I slowed down just a little bit, that I could do better. So I wanted to get myself in a situation where I could make a better product, whether it be for myself or for somewhere else. So what I decided to do is start a lab. Um, and he, Dr. Calgill told me, you need to check this system out if you're going to start your own business. Um, as you know, waxing, pressing can be somewhat labor intensive, um, depending on how fast you do it or how much time you spend on the wax ups. Um, so I said, oh, OK, you use this in your office. I've got an onlay. You know, he did for me. We were pretty good. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, so <laughs> I did the demo. Like, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bob comes out. He's with Serona now. He does a demo. It was a terrible demo. <laughs> we couldn't mill anything. He had, he had a crown that was milled on a typodon. That, it fit. I was actually pretty impressed. And I, I, got, I had a chance to play with the software. Um, and I, I, I was impressed with it, to be honest. So after the demo, Dr. Calgill, he's like, oh, man, what'd you think? That's awesome, isn't it? You know, he's all excited for me. I'm like, yeah, that's great, but my budget to start this lab is 25 grand. <laughs> I said, I can't do that, you know? So <laughs> Dr. Calgill looks at me and says, well, there will be one here Monday. Dr. Calgill purchased the in-lab system for me. He believed in it so much himself. He believed that it is what I needed to get that jump start to be able to produce what I need to produce to feed my kids. He's a smart guy. He owns a practice. He's been in practice since 96. Why the hell would I not listen to his advice? So I said, thanks, but how am I going to pay for this? He said, don't worry. Get yourself on your feet. Get your lab going. We'll talk about it later. So Small Ceramics was born. This is my laboratory. It's in my basement. Um, it's all I need right now. You don't need a lot when you have the system. But let's get to, uh, to the fun part. This is exactly the power of in-lab and a small lab. Um, there are certain features in the software that are 
helpful to me. Um, the first thing initially that I noticed was how easy it was to figure out how to get a crown designed, milled, and in my hands to do what I want. Um, that was phenomenal because I didn't have to sit around. I didn't even go to a training course for the first few months I had the machine. I was just getting my proposals, getting the crown milled, and doing what I do. Um, there are many materials that you can choose to mill with this machine, and you'll notice my slide is blank. Now, I, <laughs> I misspoke yesterday a little bit. Um, you cannot mill metal. So, but if there's anything that a dentist wants to mill besides metal <laughs> in the mill that he can't, I don't know what he wants. I mean, you can mill pretty much anything. Excellent initial proposals. I touched on that a little bit before. This is a case I did. This here was my initial proposal. You see the design before I milled it? I didn't have to do much at all. You know, straighten a few things out, kind of close that little triangle a little bit. Then I milled that. I do my cutbacks. That is actually after a little layer of clear. Um, so my cutbacks are a little more dramatic than that most of the time. Um, stack milled, which I'll talk about in a second. Three blocks, 90 bucks it cost me to make this case, besides stain and glaze and all that stuff. Um, and then that's what I end up with. Looks okay. Two powders. Not bad. I didn't know about zirconia too much when I started. So it was very important for me to be able to get what I need. I can send files anywhere I need to. The ability to outsource for a small lab is huge. It saves you time. Maybe it costs you a little more right away. But you need to be able to to be able to send stuff out other places. The ability to do implants is tremendous. You know, there's a lot of implants going on now. Um, I have the ability to, you know, if I'm looking at, like, for example, this case here with the software, I know that I don't want a screw tan crown there because I can see where the insertion act or where the hole is. Um, so what I told the doctor, I, this is a screenshot I sent him. I said, we can't do screw retained here. I won't do it. So he's like, fine, fine, fine. There's the end product. All I had to do is I designed the crown. I split the file. It makes this part here into a crown. takes the hole out. It gives me an abutment. This one here, unfortunately, I didn't take a picture of the occlusion. It's a screw retained crown. Um, I threw it in there because I like the picture. Um, Serona Connect is a very, very good thing to use. Um, you don't <laughs> the dentist will send you your, his, um, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm, it's only the second time I've done this, so I'm fumbling around a little bit. Um, they will send me their digital impression. I design it. I have my model milled, and then I fabricate these teeth. It's very important for me to be able to have my model milled with these Connect cases because I don't trust myself yet. Um, I need to have something. I, on a single unit, I'm comfortable, but that's me. Some guys are comfortable. They, they design. I don't spend a lot of time in the software, and you don't have to, and that's the beauty of CAD CAM. You can do as much or as little as you want. But Serret Connect. Not only no model work, it's accurate and reliable. The stuff fits. I have the confidence that what that doctor scans, I don't necessarily need to feel the fit. When I say I, it's important for me to, for models, it's for contacts and occlusions. It's a crown holder for me. I know it's going to fit in the mouth. Um, the ability to work on large cases, as I've been talking about, implants, you can do those connect too. Um, you, we, just in the last year or so, we've been able to do uh, implant bridges now. Before, it was just single units. Um, and it's a big time saver. I don't have to do the model work. That's a day for me. One man, get a bunch of models, that's a day. Um, and time is money. We all know this. And there's an app for that. 
So I want to connect. If I'm out in an office or something, I'll get an email, and I can check immediately the case. I can check the impression, and I can get back to the doctor and tell him if I need anything changed. Like say, hey, uh, you're not giving me enough room there. Um, I need you to prep down a little bit more, or whatever. If the margin looks suspicious, I can say, hey, what well, you know, you need to re remark that margin and send it back. So that's a pretty pretty cool little feature. The support system that I found that Serona gives us as owners is tremendous. Um, immediately, the in-lab study group was a resource that I could count on. You have PTC Technology Center and Sarek On Demand, Sarek Specialist Patterson, and the Serona reps are great. I'm good friends with my buddy Bob. Um, I want to talk about the Inland Study Group a little bit, though. Facebook, in particular, we're in a sharing generation right now. Not only are these technicians helping other technicians out on the group, and they're not the only group out there, um, but it was a phenomenal resource for me right away to to pick up on the software quickly. I wasn't able to get to the trainings, um, and it's people respond quickly. Um, I think. Response time on one question, do these little tests every once in a while if we're out on demos. I think it was like 30 seconds, Jay got a response back. So um, what I'm talking about, the sharing generation, and this kind of gets into my motivation. You got to push yourself. There's lots of, lots of technicians out there now. Do not be afraid to ask. I'm members of many groups. Uh, one group that inspired me is the Damaged Goods. Some of you guys might be familiar with that. Other groups, other places help you become what you are. Um, and progress begins at the end of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable, you're not moving forward. You're staying in the same spot. How CAD CAM fits with the high end. Immediately, I saw that what's on screen is what's going to be in my hand in a few minutes. It's very important for me to know that and to trust that. What you see is what you get. In-lab stack, not necessarily high end, but it saves you a lot of money. <laughs> if you can get two crowns in a $30 block, it's pretty cool. Biocopy is a, is a big feature that I use a lot. Um, you know, you get a case like this where a doctor says, please match these crappy PFMs. Well, I don't want to do that, but I want to keep the shape and size similar to what they had. So what I do is I biocopy this, and then I just do a little tweaking. Do my incisal cutbacks, and then we're left with a slightly better result than what they had. Another good way to use biocopy. This case here, this yellow is the model that they sent me. Four unit bridge, they barely give me the other two teeth on the other side. How am I gonna, how am I gonna do this? Well, luckily they sent a pre-op of the full arch, so I biocopied it. And then I was able to see how much room I need for my porcelain. I can design on the other, you know, see what the other side looks like. And then I know exactly how much room I'll have when it comes out of the mill. This case here, 13 powders. First one I ever did. I decided I wanted to start pushing myself. Didn't ask the doctor, just tried it. Shade was like 2L1.5 they asked for, so I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. They're gonna think it's great. Well, she thought it was great, but then she came and asked me to come and do a custom shade. All four teeth were different colors. I ended up redoing it. <laughs> but uh, the point of that is you just have to try stuff. Try new stuff. Just, just try to be better. Um, it, 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 that's what I'm all about, just pushing yourself to do the best you can. <clears throat> Incisal variation is a tool I use on every single anterior case that comes out of my laboratory. Um, Monolithic is great, and I do do it every once in a while, um, but I hate doing it. I feel like it's, a, it's just not my style. 
everybody's got their own styles, everybody's got their own needs, but I like to put my mark on it. I'm an artist, damn it. I want to sculpt this thing. I want to add color. I want to make it look like a tooth. It's going in somebody's face, you know? <laughs> I want it to look natural. So what I do is I'll use the incisal variation tool, do my cut back by hand. Um, I fire, and then there's the end result. Looks pretty good. I didn't get a chance to see what it looks like in the mouth, but I didn't hear anything about it, so it must have been okay. You only lose what you choose with CAD CAM. You might, might have heard that a little bit already today from me. This just kind of runs through my thought process and my process. This is what the crown looked like out of the mill. It took me five minutes to design it. I do my cutbacks. I'm a technician. Don't lose yourself in too much in new technology. It's great, but we are still the technicians. Um, so I do my line angles and all that, do my cutbacks. Characterize in blue, so immediately when it comes out of that first fire, I'm able to layer it, because the stain and glaze acts as a bonder layer for me. Do my final contour. And that's it. Now, <laughs> another little bit to touch on inspiration. In this case, I did after I listened to Javier Vasquez speak about his cat artistry about a year and a half ago in Chicago. Um, he, he talked about shape versus shade. So just had to throw that in there because he's been a big inspiration to me over the last couple of years. Um, Serona gives you options for growth. I'm small lab. I've got the Enos Blue right now. I don't have the X5 scanner. Um, I've got the MCXL. You can guarantee I will have one of these big bad boys in my lab, hopefully before the end of the year. Bruxer's taken off. This mill is phenomenal. Um, but you don't have to get everything at once. You can get just the scanner if you just want to start receiving files. And you know, like I said, you can send your files anywhere. You can outsource. You can pretty much build your system however you want to fit in your laboratory. If you organize yourself around your dreams, you can sit back and watch them come true. And I, I do feel, this is where the cheesy part comes, but I do feel like Serona gives me the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm living the dream right now. I own a business. I see my kids every day. Got fruit snacks in the cupboard. You know, it's, uh, it's life is good right now. Um, I owe that to a lot of people, but it's what you do with what's put in front of you. I just want to say thanks for listening to me today. Um, if you guys have any questions, now is a good time. And I want to thank Serona, too, for having me do this. It's been a pretty cool experience. So. Mike, how many firings do you typically do after you've done your side of the cutback? Um, it depends what glaze I use. Um, I've Typically, after I do my incisal cutback, I'll fire it under crystallization, and then I fire it with my powder buildup, and then I glaze fire, so that's three. Um, I've been using GC Luster Paste lately for my internals. I really like the color that I get out of that. Um, it's a little, it was a little difficult to get used to at first. But what I, so what I do in that situation is I crystallize with no glaze on it, and then I fire it with the GC Luster Paste. Then I do my add-on and then the final glaze, so it's four typically for that, unless I need to add porcelain or something like that. Yep. When you're doing uh, multi-year dancing and you guys can pull it up, how often do you get your proposals like that? I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes my proposals are jacked, um, but it's a computer, dude. You know, it's a... Uh, if you... You know, that's why the trainings that I mentioned before are very important. Um, Jay and Frank and all those guys that do the trainings, they do a good job of telling you how to set it up to where you will get those proposals. Sometimes it's just a little tweak of the model in a certain spot. Um, you know, but if you line everything up the way that the, the computer wants you to, you'll get some good, good stuff. So, I mean, it depends how quick I'm going. A lot of times I'm just like, give me a proposal. You know, let me get these things milled. So, 
Anyone else? No, you're fine. No. I'm an artist, damn it. If I can do it once, I can do it twice. But you can. It's an option. It's a nice option. Anybody else? Well, thank you again for coming to hear me out. I appreciate it.